Packer, great show. And welcome to Hannity. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle in tonight for Sean. Major breaking news this evening. Republicans are on the verge of scoring a major victory for President Trump by passing historic tax cuts and tax reform. The Senate is debating the tax bill that the House passed earlier today and is expected to have the votes needed to pass. However, Democrats are using obstruction tactics to delay the entire process. Also tonight, FBI Director Andrew McCabe is testifying on Capitol Hill and growing GOP criticism over allegations of bias at the Bureau and the Department of Justice. And Congressman Bob Goodlatte and Trey Gowdy are calling on the DOJ to allow House investigators to interview McCabe and other key FBI officials on Capitol Hill tonight with the very latest on both of these stories. Is Ed Henry. Ed? Kimberly, great to see you. Democrats are griping tonight about this major tax cut, which can only mean one thing, which is that President Trump is on the verge of his first major legislative victory in office. Some studies suggesting that over 80 percent of taxpayers will see a tax reduction because of this plan. As you know, the stock market uh, has already been on fire. Economic growth has been on the rise. The president, Republican leaders, hoping uh, that this tax cut, once signed in the law will jumpstart the economy even more. And Republicans are poised to take credit in next year's midterm elections because not a single Democrat in the House or Senate has indicated they're going to vote for it. But in fairness, Republicans will own this if it fails to actually come out and do uh, with, you know, uh, have the desired effect. Democrats noting uh, that public polls have suggested this tax package is deeply unpopular, uh, in part because some people in states like New York, New New Jersey, California will see their taxes go up and also big picture a one point five trillion dollar tax cut may increase the national debt big time. But make no mistake, this is a desperately needed win for Republican leaders and the president uh, who had seen the failure to replace uh, repeal and replace Obamacare. Remember, uh, though, this tax package includes ending the individual mandate. So that actually does rip out one key pillar of Obamacare. Here's what the rest of the package does. It cuts the corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 21 percent, a big cut. There will still be seven individual brackets, but many are going down lower, a range of 10 to 37 percent. The child tax credit will double. The standard deduction will double to 12,000 for individuals, 24,000 for married couples. Uh, and you can deduct up to $10,000 of property or state and local taxes. Meanwhile, the Senate uh, about to vote tonight night on this about 11:30 p.m. Eastern the house voted earlier but because of a procedural problem they're going to actually have to have another final vote tomorrow uh, you mentioned that meanwhile elsewhere on Capitol Hill today Andrew McCabe the deputy director at the FBI has been testifying behind closed doors to the House Intelligence Committee in fact at this late hour he arrived early afternoon he is still we're told testifying behind closed doors why is this important well remember he first came under scrutiny because McCabe Cabe's wife back in 2015 was running for a state race uh, in Virginia, received about a half a million dollars in contributions, campaign contributions from a PAC controlled by Terry McAuliffe, the Democratic governor of Virginia, who's, of course, very close to Bill and Hillary Clinton. And then these recent text messages back and forth from Peter Strzok uh, and another FBI official suggesting there was some sort of insurance policy uh, in case Donald Trump was elected, whereby the FBI might investigate him. Uh, that has come out. Uh, and you remember from those text messages, it was talking about a meeting in Andrew's office, Andy's office, believed to be Andrew McCabe's office. This is one of many questions he's being asked about at this hour behind closed doors. And in fact, there are Republicans, as you mentioned, like Trey Gowdy and others saying if they don't get their questions answered behind closed doors, they may pursue contempt of Congress charges against McCabe and other top FBI and Justice Department officials, Kimberly. All right, Ed, thank you for that update. And Good joining us now with more reaction to tonight's upcoming tax reform vote in the Senate is Chairman of the American Conservative Union, Matt Schlapp, RNC spokesperson Kaylee McEnany, and from the Fox Business Network, Nicole Petalides. Thank you all for being with us on this busy news night. So, Madam, I'm going to start with you. If this legislation actually passes the Senate tonight, then it's going to go back to the House tomorrow. How big of a win is this for President Trump and for Republicans? You just can't uh, you can't describe it in grand enough terms, Kimberly. This is 
first of all, it's uh, generational and historic, but also it just belies this one year long prosecution from the liberal press over the course of the last year, which says Donald Trump doesn't know anything about government. He can't get anything done. He's incompetent. His team is bad, blah, blah, blah. And now you look after a year, the economy is humming. He actually got he actually gets this tax reform bill through. He stopped all these regulations. It looks like this special counsel investigation is off the rails. And I think, Kimberly, things are smelling a little bit rosy. Oh, I like this. All right. So that's a rosy uh, forecast we've got there. And you don't even do the weather. OK, perfect. <laughs> right. Kaylee, so uh, what would this mean, do you think, for everyone's talking already about midterm elections in 2018? If this tax reform I gets through as the show. president, po you know, promised the American people, do you think that this is going to work out? Yes, it's going to work out and Democrats are going to pay for this at the ballot box in 2018. You know, let's make it known tonight, not a single Democratic congressman or senator voted on the side of the American people. Today marks the day they voted against the American people. They sided with big government. They sided against the American taxpayer. It's a sad day to see that they were aided and abetted by the liberal mainstream media, which has been lying about this all the way along, saying Trump would never get this done. But we are at this point, a historic achievement because President Trump picked up the phone, lobbied, made this happen, and gave the American people a Christmas gift. And he did. He promised that. In fact, Nicole said that he was going to try to get this through, you know, before Christmas. So he's been hard at work working behind the scenes and with a lot of the constituents to get this done. But let's talk about the impact and what this is going to mean in terms of tax reduction and economic growth and feeling better about themselves, families trying to move forward with the middle class if this actually goes through. Right. hundred percent. I mean, don't forget what President Donald Trump ran on during his campaign. It was all about the American people, the working class, the middle class who were really struggling, many of which don't even have $400 for an unexpected emergency. So now this moves forward. January 1st, they wake up, they have a new tax plan, an overhaul that's been 30 years too long. And now what happens on February when that goes into uh -huh. to action? These people will now have more money in their pockets. Paul Ryan today actually said, today we give the people of this country their money back. Gives It empowers Americans. Mm -hmm. They'll have not as many withholdings in their paycheck. They'll be able to do what they need to do with their money. And as far as corporate tax cuts, that is going to be extraordinary. You're going to start to see these companies, they'll be able to expand. They'll be able to raise wages. They'll be able to hire more. And that was the whole idea. Jobs, jobs, jobs for the American people. And the mainstream media somehow is putting a blind eye on the ideas of President Trump's growth plan. Right. I mean, it's a growth plan, ultimately. And GDP is on the rise. Unemployment's better. Confidence Stock is better. Market yeah. Stock market up. Stock market record year. highs. Mm -hmm. Good point, Kimberly. Yes, exactly. I watch the Fox Business Network, so I know what's <laughs> going on. Um, Matt, I want to talk a little bit about the party, too, because, you know, Nicole brings up a good point. We're talking about Paul Ryan. This is something that he has really been steadfast about. It's something that he has really tried to push forward, his tax reform. It's kind of a specialty of his. It's been a dream. And he worked cooperatively and effectively with the president of the United States to do this. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, I was a staffer with Paul in the House of Representatives too long ago, and I remember when he was a younger guy uh, with his dreams of a more free market and a, a simpler tax code. So I know he deserves a great deal of credit for pushing on this. Really, every day he's been either a staffer or, or in a Congress. And I also think President Trump deserves a great deal of tre uh, credit because, you know, I've had to make, to make some changes in this bill as it moved forward. I've liked a lot of those changes. To me, what really matters is, is that we get everyone's effective tax rate down. Sometimes there's gobbledygook in the tax code, and we just want to pay less. But here's the other piece, Kimberly, that's awfully important. This is combined. It's wrong when people say this is Donald Trump's only legislative success. They have passed tons of pieces of legislation to stop Obama's onslaught on the economy with, through regulations. If you take the easing of regulations combined with this tax bill, you might have an economic growth pattern we've not seen since Reagan. Yeah, well, this is a great point. And, you know, let's talk, Kaylee, about how important this was for Republicans to put this promise through and get a win here. Because, you know, there's challenges about other things that they tried to put forward and proffer to Congress, like, you know, uh, repeal and replace Obamacare. Some struggles along the way there with uh, obstructionists trying to get in the way of forward progress. But here it seems like this was... Um, well thought out. They have been able to get votes that they didn't necessarily think they might be able to get people to get, you know, come on board. 
That's right. This was a very different story than Obamacare repeal and replace because Republicans knew we had to make this happen. When you sit back and you say, what binds us together as Republicans? Mm -hmm. One of the bedrock principles is the idea that when you take a bet on the American people, when you give them more of their money, leave them to their own accord, they will prosper. They will grow this economy. They will harness the American dream. It's not just what Republicans should stand for. It's what Democrats should stand for, too. The JFK Democrats did stand for that. JFK said tax cuts mean higher American American income. No longer are Democrats the party of JFK. They're the mm -hmm. party of obstructionism. They're the party that wants to take down this president and they at, at the expense of the American people and having more money in their pockets. Some of the people, though, you know, Nicole, I'm disturbed when I hear by some of my esteemed colleagues. Ron Williams was bringing up today, oh, this is ridiculous. This is only benefiting, uh, you know, the rich. This is amounting to maybe $2,500. I think $2,500 is a lot of money. If some people are going to be able to get that kind of relief and put money back in their pockets. It's an enormous amount of money, and it's money that they have never seen before, obviously in decades. And it's, it's going to be a move for the economy. It's going to make the life a little bit easier for the working man and woman here in America. As far as the tax cuts for the rich, it really isn't for the rich. On the contrary, we already heard, I mean, Ed Henry just mentioned New Jersey, uh, California, New York. I mean, they're not going to feel so many great tax cuts on this one. So I think it really is spread out. And the latest number, I think, is 84 mm percent -hmm. of Americans will benefit in some way, shape or form with this tax plan. So ultimately, it's it's going to boost the economy and make people feel better and give empower them to move forward. And it's really amazing. No Democrats on board. I mean, and the, this is an American yeah, bill. It's unbelievable. American bill. This is not a Republican bill. And you think they would be on board, Matt, to help the middle class and get some of these tax cuts, you know, in place. It's a very good, auspicious start. There's a lot of good things about the bill. I'm sure there's more that can come forward, but it's a very good foundation from which to start. But then there's those that say, well, look, the poll numbers don't show necessarily that some of the American public is having a groundswell behind it. Some of that's going to be messaging, but that's maybe right. it's going to come in when they've got the dollars, you know, the Benjamins in the hands and the dollars that's in the pockets. Right. <laughs> that's right. Kimberly, here's the then thing about, like it. about presidential contests. Presidents tend to get reelected when the economy is growing and the American people feel positive about their economic prospects. So I don't care what the polls say about this, this bill. I think what matters is over time, over the course of the next year or two, do the American people feel like they have greater prospects? That's poor people. That's middle class mm -hmm. people. That's people who are succeeding in the economy. If people feel better about their prospects, they're going to be comfortable with the idea that the president's doing a good job. And by the way, Republicans in Congress as well. So if we get the policy right, like we do in this bill, I think it's going to make for good politics. And for their 401ks and IRAs, I mean, uh -huh. I turn it to the stock market always. That's if, if anybody has a work, a job and they put even a little bit away, they're already seeing the benefits. I mean, we've had an unbelievable year and now we're approaching Dow 25,000. I mean, on the night of the election, stocks were sinking. It was the the abyss. It's the end all. And look right. what happened, right? I mean, we were in the 17,000 range, 18,000, all the way now up to t almost 25,000. So it's amazing what's been happening. And it's beneficial for those who have 401ks no, and IRAs absolutely. as well. Yeah. Kaylee, so in terms of going forward, how can we translate this if people are looking at it? Um, what do Republicans need to do to be able to get this messaging out there for the midterm elections to show this as a win and a win for all Americans and not just privileged class. Yes. Well, every Republican should be out there saying the American people look at your paycheck in February. It will be higher. You will see a tangible increase and the American people will feel it. It's not something we need to tell them because they'll feel it. And you know what? Sean so often on this show talks about the forgotten man and woman. And he advocated he, you know, talked about Donald Trump being the president of the forgotten man and woman. This is that in action. This is Donald Trump standing up and passing tax cuts that are uniquely Donald Trump that take away the, the ability for congressmen to deduct their living expenses and local lobbyists to deduct their expenses and corporations to deduct their lavish dinners. These are uniquely conservative populist tax cuts. And this is Donald Trump remembering the forgotten man and woman. Well, uh, absolutely. And, you know, Matt, what do you think in terms of now, I want to go back a little bit, because in order for things to get done, you know, the president's got to be able to get the support of all Republicans, um, not just, you know, the populist movement, but the rank and file, right. um, you know, basically the establishment. How do you make this move into a win for the president in terms of that relationship coalescing? 
Well, I've, I've spent too much time living in the swamp, Kimberly. Let me tell you something <laughs> I know about them. They like a winner. Swampy. And the fact is, as we close out this year, Donald Trump is a political winner. Yes, people can knock him in Great the point. liberal media. They can knock him in the polls. But you can't argue with the strength of the economy. You can't argue with the fact that he has been keeping his campaign promises one after another. He keeps them with that speech he made the other day on securing our national security combined with a strong economy. Yes. Uh, they like a winner, Kimberly. And this is a great way to end the year. Yeah, that was very, uh, you know, Reagan-esque in terms of the themes and what he was hitting and just really strong Republican messaging there. So, you know, and he's for limited government and getting rid of the regulations. And now he's going to give some tax relief if he can get this through. And as you see, we're awaiting the Senate vote on the tax reform bill already passed the House and we'll see what happens tonight. So keep it right here. I want to thank you so much, Matt and Kaylee and Nicole for being with me tonight. Coming up, while the Senate is set to pass a Republican tax bill later tonight, the left is completely losing it. Nancy Pelosi and other Democrats are deploying scare tactics to try to kill support for the bill. Austin Goolsby and Charlie Hurt join us next. Stay with us. We spent all of our time together in our majority. Here's what it's going to take to get America back on its feet. Here's what it's going to take to help people who are struggling. Here's what it's going to take to get this economy out of the malaise it's been for a decade to get true growth, to hit our potential. And we're doing it today. This is the greatest example of a promise being made and a promise being kept. With this measure, not only providing middle class tax relief, but an opportunity for businesses to be competitive globally, We've got a chance to take America to new heights. We're confident this will work, and we're prepared to take that argument to the American people. That was GOP congressional leadership praising the tax bill passed by the House earlier today, and it is set to be voted on by the Senate tonight. But Democrats are using their old scare tactics to try and kill this historic piece of legislation. Take a look. This is the worst bill to ever come to the floor of the House with stiff competition for what some of the things they've tried to do. The worst bill in history because of the number of people it affects, the amount of money, it, it sucks up to the higher income. History will indeed remember this vote. Future generation of Americans will remember who cast their votes to raise taxes on 86 million middle class households. How can Republicans defend this? The only people who want it are their very wealthy paymasters who seem to run the Republican Party these days and they're running it into the ground. Joining us now with reaction is Fox News contributor Charles Hurt and former Obama economic advisor Austin Goolsby. Thanks for being here with me tonight. Hey, Kimberly. Gentlemen, good. Thank good you. to see you. Charlie, so are you surprised by the scare tactics uh, Democrats are using to attack this bill? Do you like the little Pelosi montage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was great stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it, honestly, I think that they're starting to, to uh, buy into this sort of uh, media myth that this is somehow an analog to the... Uh, to the Obamacare bill, where yes, it was uh, uh, you know put put through on strictly partisan lines, but my goodness, the difference between Obamacare and tax cuts mm -hmm. is nobody liked Obamacare. People, lo Americans love tax cuts, and the tax cuts are something that Republicans have uh, run on, and it, it won them the White House and both chambers of Congress, and, and they're just simply, you know, fulfilling a promise that they made. Mm -hmm. Austin, so let me ask you something. Is there anything, because you're a smart economic man, why isn't it that some of the Democrats have jumped on board to help put dollars back in the middle class, the pockets of middle class? Why do we see such vitriolic rhetoric coming from the likes of, you know, de Democrat leadership from Nancy Pelosi saying how bad it is. Well, because it is bad oh. and it is not primarily a tax cut for middle class people. That's the main reason. This thing has the support. It has a 26 percent approval rating by the American people. That's the most unpopular tax cut in the history of polling. I believe <laughs> that Roy Moore in Alabama has more support <laughs> than this tax cut. Okay, here so we go with the drama. <laughs> I think the Republican okay. Party needs to do a better job of creating a bill and of explaining a bill. And when I say creating the bill, 
They're going to have to re-vote because they put errors in the House version, and it's only the tip of the iceberg. We're going to be cleaning okay. up this well, mess if it, for years. Well, if it passes the Senate tonight, which is what we're waiting right now to get this um, Senate vote in, then it's going to go back to the House. So I can concur that there's some messaging issues. Perhaps they could sell yes. it better. But, Charlie, when people <laughs> actually— yeah. I'll just give you that point. <laughs> but when people are actually getting the benefit and the dollars in exactly. their bank accounts and they're exactly. able to actually buy some extra things for their family, make some investments, maybe be able to get a mortgage on a home, do something like that or get that car or pay for education, that to me is going to swell the polling on it and people are going to like it. Maybe they just Absolutely. have to feel it a little bit more before they Well, I love mean, you it. say that, but Absolutely. they're getting I rid of stipulate. mortgage interest deductions. <laughs> I would stipulate that, Austin, that you're right about that, that, they, that Republicans are, are, but this is no newsflash, they're terrible about messaging anything, right. but, and they've been terrible about messing, messaging this bill. But, I, what I, uh, but what I would say is, though, uh, once this takes effect, it's gonna, it, the proof will be in the pudding, as you, right. as you say, Kimberly. And if it works, if what they say, uh, if, if the stimulus does uh, kickstart the economy, it, Republicans will be in very, very good shape, not only in two years but, or, or, or in one year, but also in three years. If it fails to do that, and, and it really is just a tax cut for the rich and the rich just get richer and the middle class doesn't feel, this sort of th feel the benefits from this, then they're going to be in real trouble. Well, the upper echelon really isn't even getting a tax benefit. There's some corporate tax benefits and whatnot, yeah, Austin. But yeah. the majority of this is co coming for lower and middle class families. Not true at all. Not true. even remotely true. The majority of this bill, more than 80% of the money, is going to high income people and big corporations. And by the time it's fully phased in, literally 53% of Americans are going to have their taxes higher than oh. they are now because they're phasing out all of those middle class tax cuts that you're that you are promoting if the reason this bill is unpopular is not because the republicans use the wrong words to describe it it's because what's in it and that's why the american people do not like it and this is you guys are wrong you're deluding yourselves if you think this is not going to be hung around the necks of the republicans you're i'm deluding sure i'm sure yourself. democrats will try but I also think that you, uh, Austin, and, and Nancy Pelosi suffer from PTSD after uh, uh, passing Obamacare, which, <laughs> yeah. was, a, which was a terrible and bill, Pelosi. and everybody hated it, and Democrats lost a 1,000 seats. The only person who managed to win re-election off of Obamacare yes. was Obama himself, and he was a very special, unique candidate who appealed to that people. That was a, a tough a moment, way. but I will remind you that Obamacare <laughs> is now more than twice as popular as this tax bill. Hey, well, you know, messaging is is not well, Republican strong. popularity of presidents <laughs> the, tends to go up some. after they've what left office. Like but, okay. Yeah, but I think this is going to be, if you look at it, President Trump was able to bring together this. I mean, I think they probably should have done tax reform first, but before trying to do uh, replacing Obamacare and repealing it. Charlie, I see you moving your... But, yeah, and, and uh, very important here is the fact that uh, I would argue that this bill, because it includes the individual mandate, uh, does an awful lot to accomplish Donald Trump's entire legislative agenda in this single bill. And, and uh, that's the, both politically and I think pragmatically, I think that it's a huge deal for Republicans and for Donald Trump. Yeah, that's why I think it should have come first. Now, how, how do yeah, you counter right. that? Yeah, Austin? exactly. No? no, I don't counter that. You I don't. think okay. if the president had started with infrastructure, he actually could have gotten a lot of Democrats on you his side. You guys just want to spend money. That's all you ever want to do. No, he probably well, that's why would I call have them been tax smarter and to spend start Democrats, with Democrats, Austin, because you guys are good at like spending it, but then what is there to show for it? This bill, they're trying to put Look, money back to the you, people to let you, them decide and have economic you, power. You guys are going to, I really think you're going to regret having had this conversation and put yourself on record saying that this is a good <laughs> idea. The, PTSD the American people do not like this bill because it's a bad <laughs> bill. It's riddled with errors and it creates tons of loopholes. And we're going to find that it out over the next loopholes. two years. It creates loopholes. No, it doesn't. It, it does yes, eliminate it loopholes. It doesn't eliminate nearly as much as I want. Right. But. Wait. It creates a 20% pass-through rate for very rich people who can convert their income into business forms. That's going to be an unbelievable loophole, the grandmother of all loopholes. And we're going to see that play out over the next two years, just like they did in Kansas, where they did something very similar.
All right. Well, Charles, where do you think that the president can go with this in terms of the messaging? Because everybody's talking about midterm elections already in 2018 and really trying to use this as some, you know, for some momentum to be able to retain seats. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously it is a tremendous victory for him uh, being able to work with Congress and get something through. Uh, that's a tremendous uh, victory. But I do think that, it, it, you know, what matters is, does he continue to do what he's been doing all along, which is to use administrative means to continue to cut red tape and convince people that he's serious about growing the economy and, and, and freeing it and let people uh, pursue uh, their economic uh, interests on their own uh, without uh, involvement of the federal government? And if he continues to do that and the economy is strong, uh, when, when in 2018, then uh, Republicans will, will, will do very well. We'll, well. They'll do just fine. Mm -hmm. It's always tough. It's always tough for the, the uh, party in power after a first, uh, you know, for the first midterm election. But most importantly, in four years, three years, he will be fine. If the economy is humming and people feel better sure. about their situation, he will be fine. He will win. Well, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, we look at it historically, Austin. You know, when you've had a booming economy and people feel good, have job security, they see the market is up, you see job growth, all of the above, a good GDP, then many times the incumbent will win re-election. Yes, I mean, look, it yeah, worked out with helps. Clinton and President Donald Obama. Donald Trump, yeah, look, Donald Trump inherited the lowest unemployment rate of an incoming oh, president in a half century. And if he can continue the Obama economy, he yeah. probably does have a good chance. The Democrats are going to have to get their act together to try to take him down in 2020. Okay, so Charlie, this is actually, he circled it back, Austin did. It's yeah. actually so President Trump should send President Obama yeah. thank you note of some sort. Is that what it was? I think yeah, I got that. This, this, this reminds me of uh, back during the Obama years when everything would go wrong. Even mm -hmm. in like the seventh year, Obama was still blaming uh, the, his Bush, predecessor, yeah. Yeah, President George W. Bush. And now it's the exact same thing. Now it's all flipped. But I think, you know, I think I think there's still time, Austin. I think I think we can bring you over to the to the good side. <laughs> yeah, we got to show him the money. Okay, He's follow you guys the money. are going to deny the money. that you ever defended this tax bill. Oh, when everything know. goes wrong, you're going to say, no, no, I knew that that was a problem and they should have gotten rid of that. Some, if you're, somehow if you're I don't think he's going to be economist. hiding in the corner. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, if you're an honest economist, I think that even you will be, will be turned around on this within three years. All right. We're going to have to meet back here in three years. Okay? Mark your calendars. Indeed. All right. Fantastic. Guys, always a pleasure. Charlie and Austin, thanks so much. Coming up, we're awaiting a set of vote on the tax plan. Also tonight, Republican Congressman Blast Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe before his testimony on Capitol Hill. And Senator Ron Johnson is demanding answers about how Robert Mueller obtained Trump transition team emails. Greg Jarrett and David Aval join us next. Stay with us. This is a Fox News alert, and we are looking live at the Senate floor where a vote on the Republican tax reform bill will be taking place very soon. And this tax bill vote is not the only big news coming out of Capitol Hill this evening. FBI Director Andrew McCabe is still testifying before the House Intelligence Committee in a closed door hearing. He has been there for seven hours. McCabe's appearance comes amid growing criticism over his alleged conflicts of interest in the Clinton email probe and allegations of anti Trump bias within the FBI. Just yesterday, Senate Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley suggested that McCabe should be replaced. And Fox News has exclusively returned, uh, learned that Senator Ron Johnson has sent a letter to the General Services Administration asking for more information about the Trump transition emails obtained by Mueller and his team. Joining us now is GOPAC Chairman David Avella and Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Greg, I'll begin with you. Thanks for being here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Senator Grassley is openly saying that Andrew McCabe should be fired and replaced. Do you agree with this recommendation? Oh, absolutely. Look, this is a guy who probably has spent the day wishing he was getting a root canal instead of answering the questions behind closed doors. Now for seven hours, two minutes ago, it was still going on. He has a lot to answer for. Why didn't he recuse himself from mm -hmm. investigating Hillary Clinton when his wife was getting Clinton-related money, $675,000? I mean, that's unconscionable. Um, it, what was going on in his office with Peter Strzok and, and Lisa Page, the two FBI agents who were sending these anti-Trump messages? What was this insurance policy plan they had in mind? And also, 
What was the FBI's role in this dossier paid for by Hillary Clinton and Democrats mm -hmm. to dig dirt on Trump? Was it used to get a FISA warrant to spy on Trump? Uh, and what was Bruce Orr doing talking to, you know, the founders of Fusion GPS and the officers there and Christopher Steele when his wife is working for Fusion GPS or has been demoted, but there's got to be more to it. And the FBI seems to be clamming up. Okay, so David, how, what do you we make of this? You know, Greg is saying, like, how could this go, you know, I guess sort of unnoticed at the time, and it just seems so baked in, and there was such inherent bias at the time with a specific agenda that really compromised the integrity of the investigation. It makes you wonder if Bob Mueller has a tattoo of Hillary Clinton on his leg like the guy on Saturday Night Live does. Right, exactly. Bob Mueller took a respected career and turned it into an emotional therapy session for Clinton apologists who want to use this as a way to justify why Hillary Clinton lost. Mm -hmm. There were plenty of people he could have picked to put on this investigation. Sure. Many career FBI agents who would have done a very thorough and much faster investigation than what's been going on right now and that we're stuck here with what now looks clearly like a political witch hunt. You know, Greg, so many people are saying this is something where perhaps McCabe is, you know, going to resign. And so many were even shocked that he went forward to testify because they thought sort of his exposure and involvement was so significant. Uh, you know, and they're getting grilled in terms of the questions right. there that what we saw previously last week as well. Well, I think he probably feared uh, getting hauled in front of a federal judge after a contempt of Congress citation. Um, so instead, they negotiated it, and they're doing it behind closed doors under the guise of classified information. I'd be surprised if, you know, 25 percent was classified and 75 percent Americans should actually be watching. Americans want to know uh -huh. what was going on here. But in Why? terms of making that determination, because you make a great point, we've seen hearings that have been public, and right. then if it, it rises to the level of being significant classified information, they make that predetermination. People at home are saying, well, wait a second. What's going on here? This right. is an investigation that appears to have bias from what we've seen coming sure. out in the reports in the media, but now the rest of it's behind closed doors. The, the Hillary email case is a good example. It was closed, mm -hmm. right? So, and there's nothing classified in there, especially if you're asking McCabe, what, what was your role in the exoneration letter? Why was the wording changed to absolve sure. Hillary Clinton when originally it was determined she committed crimes? Did you change some of the wording along with Peter Strzok? Now, none of that is classified information. So there's no reason for him to hide behind closed doors or something like that. And, and some of the other information, the dossier, mm. I, arguably that's not classified either. Uh, I mean, after all, it was funded by the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton. Sure. Let's get to the bottom of that. Was it used for a FISA warrant? Again, I'd argue that's not classified information. All right, David, what's your take? This is doing more to keep President Trump's base behind him and supporting him than even this tax cut, which is very important and very critical for Republicans in 2018. This investigation is doing more to keep uh, the president's base behind him. And it's the Democrats' hope that we talk about this and not talk about the tax cuts that we're doing, not talking about the individual mandate that's being repealed in this tax cut bill, not talking about the jobs that are going to be created by opening up ANWR. This bill is historic and significant that's going to pass tonight, but yet the Democrats hope we continue talking about this investigation. And Americans don't seem to be buying it, Hillary, because, um, Kimberly, sorry, um, because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got Hillary on the brain. I know, oh, goodness. <laughs> um, because the latest polls show that 53 or 54 percent, you know, think that it's tainted, it's corrupt. Sure. Uh, an even larger number think that, uh, you know, the FBI and the Department of Justice are hiding things from uh, the American public and from Congress. So, you know, the American public, you know, they're smart people. They know that the deck seems to be stacked. All you have to do is look at the people that Mueller chose. There's not a single Republican among them. One of them was a lawyer representing Hillary Clinton. Uh, another one has sent uh, anti-Trump messages to Sally Yates and was there at the what was supposed to be a celebration on election night for Hillary Clinton. Um, these are people. I mean, there are plenty of great lawyers out there that could have been selected, but not those with a political axe to grind. Mm, that's the problem. It's just it really, you know, as a former prosecutor and having worked closely as well with the FBI and with, you know, investigations that, uh, you know, on corruption as well. When you think about this, that they really just had such a predetermined focus, David, that they had an outcome that they wanted 
to achieve. It just really shakes the, the core and the foundation of what we think. Because the FBI, in, in my opinion, and people that I work with, some of the most outstanding men and women, finest agents, you know, out there, and they really work hard. And I think a lot of them are upset by this, too, of the bad behavior of a few of these people involved. As they should be. As also, the very people who are cheering an investigation that is indicting people for things they did years ago are the very same people who say Hillary Clinton's actions are in the past and there's no reason to investigate them. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest double standard on whether justice is for everyone or not. We, you know, we, we don't have kings and tyrants here in America. Nobody's above the law. If you broke the law, then you should be held accountable regardless of who you are. Um, you know, Hillary Clinton doesn't get a free pass simply because she was a political opponent of the guy who won, mm -hmm. which is the argument that a great many uh, Democrats seem to be making is, oh, you can't weaponize politics like this by going after a political opponent. That's not the case. If a political opponent breaks the law and does so with impunity repeatedly, she ought to be held accountable. Well, absolutely. We don't want to think there's a different standard of justice depending on what somebody's political or partisan ideology is, David. To Greg's point, the only way you're going to get the American people saying they're for this investigation continuing is to overpoll Democrats like what they're doing in the tax bill to suggest that somehow Americans don't support this bill. The media polls all say uh, poll far more Democrats than they do Republicans and independents to get mm -hmm. unfavorable numbers on the tax plan. You know, Greg, do you really think this is going to help? Not, you know, not only the president, because the president said in the beginning there was no Russian collusion, but they really tried to, you know, put this on him to undermine, you know, his presidency. Uh, can he use this somehow to help uh, him in campaigning for the 2018 uh, midterm elections to help some of the people that he needs to keep in for the votes? Yeah, I, I think Democrats need to be careful here mm -hmm. that, that they don't continue to push this. There could be a tremendous backlash. There so far doesn't appear to be a scintilla of evidence of any collusion during the campaign. Uh, and, and even if there was, it's not a crime, only antitrust law, as you well know. Right. As a lawyer, um, the question of whether or not Mueller will go after the president for obstruction of just, justice, I don't even think is a close case. Mm -hmm. uh, there has to be a lie, threat, or a bribe, and not even Comey alleges that. The president was well within his constitutional authority yeah, so then, to dismiss Comey. Comey admitted it in a letter to his staff. So maybe let you know, Mueller finish the investigation because sure. the president is saying there isn't anything that he has to But these to things provide. tend to go on for a couple of years. That's the problem with special counsel. He should finish the investigation, but he should get people in there that will do it efficiently and fairly. Have some good oversight. All right. Thank you so much, David and Greg. Always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Coming up, Ed Henry is standing by live on Capitol Hill with an update on the Senate tax reform vote. Plus, we'll speak to two Republican lawmakers about what this means for your wallet. Stay with us.